gone. I had much time to think about my life. But I come to you even now, Lord, and ask you to forgive me for my part in this situation. But I ask you, Lord, to build me in it, to make me strong in it, make them strong. Bishop Felix Omar Hill coming with his song about a bad relationship that used to be really good. So we're going to use that song a couple of times in the midst of this 
session, we're going to talk about the Satan's uh, big, fat sex lives. We're going to talk about that because most times people meet one another uh, and they go into the intimacy of trying to connect on a sexual level before they even get to know who they are and what they, they can do as a couple. If you notice in that song, he pointed out a few things that will come up as we're studying this lesson. We are Amazing Grace Outreach Ministry here in Salem, Oregon, and we have come to you this evening to bring a session about learning to recognize the truth. And when we think about marriage, when we think about things that are going to have a lasting effect on everyone, because it's not you're marrying just one person. You know, you're marrying into a covenant. So learning to recognize the truth. The devil was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. John chapter 8, verse 44. Hot, thick air in guffle of the camps that we go to and the sessions and events and everything. And wow, here we go. We meet someone that seems to be the dream of our life that we already want to spend our life with based on sensation, based on, um, you know, what the eyes see, all of the, the sensual um, things that go with the, the senses of sense, of smell, touch, hear, just all of the natural senses. And we're ready to get married. That goes both ways. <laughs> so I want to kind of indulge you for a few minutes about some of the sex lies that the enemy tells us. Okay, good things will come to those who wait. So we already got our mind kind of set that we're ready to be a uh, husband or be a wife. And we meet someone that um, we don't even take time to get to know them, truthfully. We just like the vibe that we have when we meet each other. And we get to a point where it's three phases, you know, and even if you're planning to marry someone, it's still the observation times. The phrases and the phases are that we want to be holding each other in Yahweh's eyes. That's if you're a believer now. And that could go the other way around, that you could be a believer and you, you feel like you can pick this one out yourself. You don't need his help. But when we look at, the, when we look at what we just heard on that song and we relate that, I want to talk about how the, the bride wore white. And when the bride wants to wear white, that means that she doesn't want to indulge in a relationship, a sexual intimate relationship before marriage. The beauty of sexual love is being camouflaged by big fat lies. Of course, because Satan has entered onto the scene, John 8:44, the scripture that we opened with, tells us the true character of Satan. The devil was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. What is Satan? He is a big, fat liar. And I think his favorite line, uh, his favorite line to relate to helping us indulge in things is get right to the intimate part. You know what I'm saying? He's going to always uh, scheme, plot, and plan to make sure he gets control of your flesh, gets a hold on your mind when he lies and when he wants to take you into his captivity. He says to you the things you want to hear. He almost does a body read, you know, to see where your weakness might be. Your sexuality, because of its powerful symbolism. We talk about, you know, more about that later, about how, you know, the power of sex and the symbol of sex can influence you to end up um, acknowledging relationships that were never going to be healthy for you. 
and be good for you. Okay, compare the way he lies to you and how he lies to me about sex and the way that he lied to Eve about the tree of knowledge and the good and evil. Why did you think he got to do that? Was God's word telling us that everything in the garden was created by God's own hand? It tells us that he's, he is incapable of making anything that is not good. That means Yahweh cannot ever make anything that's not good. So if very possible, the tree of knowledge of good and evil would have had quite an impact, um, noble purpose, but when Eve had waited for him to reveal that to her in his own time. Okay? Interesting to know that when you think about the whole situation, we need to always ask Yahweh, teach us your way. Teach us what it is to, that we need to always be focused on so we don't let the enemy penetrate and lie to us in a question. You know, that's, <laughs> that's how he came. He came in a question asking her, you know, making her rethink a decision that the rules that God had already given her. So as we think about this and we think about the song that Bishop is singing about um, getting a divorce and, and, and that's the end results, okay? The end results. But the bride always wants to wear white and she wants to wear white because the stronger part of her is to honor her husband, honor Yahweh, and also remain, you know, intact as a woman of God. She wants to, to have all of those things to come at the right time. If anyone is doing, doing it and there is something awful, like AIDS, see, that's another thing. Most people, I'm going to say this, COVID comes do you not know publicly people were talking about how they want to have sex, but they don't want to have sex because of COVID? I mean, we're talking about professional people. And this was publicly being said, you know, uh, you know, in a joking way. And to, for me, it was like that's a, a real violation of your character, of your reputation. Um, you know, you're looking... Uh, out in the world and speaking about serious things, but you're not saying that, you know, trying to, our young people, I'll say it like this, your young people really don't need to hear uh, uh, adult women talking about how they want to have sex and uh, how they're not going to kiss. And you're supposed to be on a news feed talking about things that are going on that are way more serious. So that's how kind of loose we've gotten. We, we found, this, you know, a way to make pleasure and make conveniences uh, more important than the things that are turning our worlds upside down. And especially when you think about taking that one chance, and I hear people talk about safe sex. How can sex be safe if it's not in the covenant that the Father has desi designed it to be? How can it be safe? So we have so many specialists will give you more internal medical reasons why your body doesn't need to experience that. And, you know, that's just one side of the medical part. But then there's the side, of course, that Satan uses many lies and he customizes them. The time to be right for the person to whom he is lying. He, he seems like he just synchronizes with um, that very vulnerable time that, uh, you may not recognize his cunningness. You hear three di distinct lies that Satan tells us. There are such things like when she was in, when Eve was in the garden, I want you to know they are so you can see them. When he throws them your way, you can see his lies. The first of Satan's biggies, write your story. It's your story. You can tell your story. What do you think? How has Satan deceived you? Wait a minute. When you when you just think back, you may not have ended up, you know, committing any kind of sin, but when you're tempted, the Bible says there's no temptation known to man that he hasn't made a way of escape. 
And that is so true, resisting um, the, the lure, resisting the lure. That means you don't put yourself in the way of uh, temptation. Resisting the lure to sin would be a very first thing that you want to get away from. Now, some of us like to play, <laughs> play in the fire. Uh, I'll say a lot of us like to, you know, it's, it's kind of fun a little bit. You know, you having fun. Oh, it ain't nothing. I can control it. I can, you know, I can handle it. Mm -mm, not at all. It shouldn't be that we try to handle temptations in our own power. Never do. It never will work work very well. So we look at the word of Yahweh in Ephesians 5 and 3. It says that within the body, within where the bride would want to wear white in the church, there must be not even a hint of sin, not even a hint of sexual immortality or any kind of impurity. So that's kind of, you know, I don't know if the church even hears scriptures like that anymore, but Ephesians 5.3 says there must not even be a hint of sexual immortality or any kind of impurity. Paul says, but nothing, everything, but nothing can work well if everything is good for us. I agree with that. I so agree with that. So refuse to let anything have power over you. Don't be immoral in manners of sex. There is a sin against your own body in a way that no other sin is. That's one thing that um, when we did this course, this is actually uh, the Bride Wore White is an eight-week Bible study for young young women, but mostly old women came when we did it, <laughs> when we did the study. But this study was uh, for us to understand what pureness was, the purity. We call it the, the um, purity conference for young young ladies. And it worked very well. Very well. We had um, women, were well, probably about 21, no older than 30 at the most. But every last one of the women that came, they rededicated their lives back to Yahweh. First, that means they repented. Then they were taken by accountability. Because we found working with the women for those eight weeks, they didn't have the, the man father figure in place. That was some of the, the troubles that they had been exposed, had been maybe even abused or mentally, verbally, um, emotionally abused by men they trusted. And some never even had fathers. And uh, so when we think about that scripture and think about being pure sexually, 1 Corinthians 6.12 also adds, God says, no, and you can be ab abstinent. You can be. You don't have to go and uh, go all the way. You know, these are, these are things that the enemy will tell you. Well, we can just do this, you know, just inching his way. Uh, and you got a memory bank, remember? You can, you know, remember the things, uh, how far you went, and next you go a little bit farther next time. So it's a, it's a lot to think about when you as a young lady wanting to be uh, be pure, wanting to not defile your wedding night, you want to be intact for your wedding night. So this um, eight weeks is a special, special time. And it's usually happening around this time of the year, uh, around March or April. So there is a, a dullness, a monotony, that sheer boredom starts coming over um, a young lady that has, um, you know, it, some some people just can't handle it emotionally. Be they haven't, they're, they're not even developed. So they're not even prepared mentally or psychologically to handle what comes with being sexually engaging. Okay, so they had um, God's word promises the very thing in Deuteronomy 6 and 24, when it says, Yahweh commanded us to obey all these decrees 
so that we might always prosper. That's an awesome scripture. I love that scripture. Always prosper in everything. So that means we're not going to have our mindset to bring um, disgrace to our parents. Or I, I use that a lot. But to your family, period, you know, to the way you were brought up, hiding behind the fig tree leaves, remember that? Say the second big lie. He, he instantly you go into hiding out because you committed sin. Okay, we're not going to stay on this long. It was just an introductory to uh, just give you some provoking thoughts about, you know, with the end results being divorce, with the end results being uh, regrets. But one thing I did notice about the song, he did indicate that he forgave. He, he landed that song on a good last note, hiding behind the fig trees part. He ended that with understanding that they may have an opportunity to be friends. He mentioned being a father. He mentioned being a husband. He mentioned being a good man. So that's not the case all the time. Sometimes when people go into relationships and um, they can't even stay committed as just being a friend, let alone being a husband, you know? I hope you like that song, and uh, I just wanted to give Bishop a play this tonight. Again, it's a song that I just came across that he recently made, probably about a year ago, and I wanted to play it on one of my sessions to introduce the bride, War White, and we could go and talk about that a little bit more, Seven Secrets to Sexual Purity. I think um, it's been a course uh, that people take during the summertime, and they take a group of women and young ladies, and they have these Bible studies. Every um, end of the eight weeks, they have a banquet, and they may have an uncle, they may have even their dad. We want the women to be validated the reason we want them to be validated is because they need to know someone expects uh, a higher um, level of lifestyle. They, they want you to be conscious of how to do that and educate you because the book does have a lot of uh, female doctors that come and talk to the women so they can let them know what they jeopardize when they are out of sync, not just about the spiritual, but also about the health issues and also the appreciation for your body image, understanding that you don't, you don't have to uh, hold on to someone that only sees you in that, in that eyes of being a sexual object. I thought that was a beautiful course. I would always use that. Uh, even now, in the future, I would use it because a lot of times women don't have time to you know just talk about their sexual experiences we need to give platforms to that kind of thing. But um, one of the things we recognized and we did, we're glad to be able to announce when we did the sessions, we had virgins there. We had women that had never had sex. So we didn't just have women that have, you know, tripped up on the wedding vows or whatever the case be. We had women that were virgins. Now, when I have that session again, have that seven, I'm sorry, eight weeks session. I'm going to need some more virgins. I'm going to need women that can tell where they're coming from and why they're taking a stand. I have actually heard a few young men uh, have said they're not going to have sex outside of marriage. So even though the enemy has things all cluttered up and, and seem like everybody's just out there loose, I don't believe that. I believe there's some people that have, and I don't mean slipping and backsliding and then come back and try to act like you. No, I'm talking about someone that has endured and they have abstained from having sex outside of marriage. And you know, uh, my experience in as being a woman, you're going to always have the temptation. You, you're going to always have, you know, uh, someone that would, would definitely, uh, you know, I'm not saying they're leading you astray. Not even that. I'm saying that they would always test you and see where you're standing on that ground if you were given opportunity to be in that situation. 
But as it says, resist the sexual um, mis misconduct. Just resist, resist it. Uh, Pastor Bishop has a church in Alabama. Dear God. Here it goes again. future he was a livy polivy um, what that word is olivious of her real true feelings and her emotions and again this is not to say who is right or wrong but it's to bring out situations that we can find ourselves in not being able to communicate you know and uh if you have children involved that's even a whole different ball game when children are involved and you've got to kind of try to be discreet of how you're going to handle coming out of a marriage, coming out uh, of a relationship that wasn't going to ever work in the first place. Now, have you ever been in a situation where you kept holding on? I've seen in this day and time, you get comfortable with someone, and just because you know them, even the bad or good uh, situations, you know them, so you try to continue to hold on. You try to continue to think that, well, I'm going to take this person back again for the second time, for the third time. And it's almost like they take you for granted. They know, you know, because they know you really love. People know when you really love them. And they'll flip-flop and come back again and again and again and decide that you're going to be there. But one of the things you're cheating yourself out of is your own self-esteem. Because every time you make a decision to allow your life to be flopped in like that, you are going to doubt who you are. And you spend time when the person comes back just trying to just get him or her to recognize the value and, and who you are in their life. When all the time, as I said when we first started, you were never in a relationship with that person. You were laying yourself out to be taken advantage of. We want to get a hold of that kind of thing. You know, we have to really be careful that, um, you know, don't bargain with the enemy. Don't bargain with the enemy because when you when you start bargaining with him, you, you won't win. He'll always find a way to tear you down. Always find a way to tear you down and keep you wandering and keep you on hold and everything like that. In the book of uh, Philippians, it says that defining innocence and purity. Purity is a process. That was a good part of the teaching for the young ladies because um, they were assenting. You know, it's like put the makeup on, put, you know, dress in the finest clothes, but they felt empty on the inside. They felt like, you know, something was always missing. And they always felt guilty of the same mistake. So we had them to do affirmations, you know, to uh, help them go through the changing of the mind and heart about what pure is. So we had them to read something like a little affirmation every beginning of the lesson. 
you know, I am pure. Yahweh, our God, has completely purified me. 1 John 2, 28. Now, dear children, continue in him, confidence and unashamed. How great is the love of the Father has lavished on us. When Messiah appears, we shall be like him. Everyone who has his hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Those are the scriptures that we use to help the um, young ladies um, be able to get a, a mindset of understanding that's a process of healing. This, the uh, incident or situation, if it had taken place, basically those 50 people that came, we didn't really have anyone that, you know, that was without a situation. Everyone mostly did have some kind of situation um, that they had experienced. And the ones that I said were virgins. They had already had a self-esteem issue before. You know what their deal was? Their deal was the fact that people was laughing at them about do, doing nothing sexually before marriage. Yes, and we're talking about people that were in congregations. You know, it's like the ones that had crossed the line and, and, and went into those kind of relationships, and here you are, you know, you, you're trying to save yourself. They don't respect that because they want you to mess up just like they did. And so that was one of the situations that we found that's kind of like, wow, you know, you would think they would try to um, ask questions about a whole lot of things that would help them be strengthened, but there was people that would kind of make fun of them. And they said they went through that a lot. A lot of times they went through being made fun of um, with their peers. And these these particular days were years ago, so I don't know what to think, you know, uh, about what's happening now. We're going to finish the song out, and I'm going to close. I don't want to go over the minutes that we're allotted. Sounds like the woman was the one encouraged the divorce. Uh, we want to kind of want to know, being a real family man, what did anything help the situation? He mentioned a therapist and all that. What situation could he have maybe come up with so he could have saved the marriage? 
you know it, it I know it's a song but I'm I'm just thinking that sometimes you know we find the answer in the things that we neglect to do so I want to kind of give a description of keeping love and kindness and justice in focus when we have situations we never know I mean some of us never know what kind of relationship we might end up in it doesn't mean because you don't have it going on now that it won't happen it can happen to anyone uh love and kindness ephraim um, envelops that with lies the house of israel was deceit but judah still rules with god and is faithful to the holy one ephraim pursues win and follows after the east wind daily increasing lies and desolation and make covenant with the Assyrians and olive oil is carried into Egypt. Yahweh also has controversy with Judah and will punish Jacob according to his ways, according to his doings, he will repay him. He took his brother by the heel in the womb and by his strength, he had power with Yahweh. Yes, he had power over the angel and prevailed. He wept and made supplication to him, finding him at Beth El. And there he spoke to us. And he said, Yahweh, our host, is a memorial name. Therefore, turn to your God, keep loving kindness and justice, and wait on your God continuously. That's such a beautiful scripture that's found in the book of Hosea, which we did another session, and we used Hosea earlier. This is uh, chapter 12, verse 1. Um, and then we took verse 1, went to verse 7. So that whole thing would kind of lay a format out to go the extra mile. That's what I would say one of the things could happen if you find yourself at the end of your rope with a relationship. Now, I hear a lot of times people want to run instead of going through the process. It says here in 12, uh, chapter 12, verse 8, you are a merchant whose balances of deceit are in his hand. Revelation three seventeen, he loves to oppress. And Ephraim said, yeah, I have become rich. I have found substance for myself. In all my labors, they will find in no iniquity in me that was sin. Verse 10 says, And I am Yahweh, your God, from the land of Egypt. I shall yet make you live in tents. So in the days of the appointed seasons I have also spoken through the prophets I am has multiplied visions and used uh, a lot of time for ministry and for the prophet to speak is there wickedness in Gideon surely they are vain they sacrifice bulls in Gilgal yes their altars are like heaps in the furrow of the fields I'm going to stop right there. That's, that's kind of said, said it all. I pray that love and kindness and justice would be in every relationship that you find that has been um, begin to take form in your life. And because you stop a relationship doesn't mean the relationship is over. You know, so consider the fact that you you're tying yourself, even if you're not marrying someone, you're tying yourself and just as if you plan to marry a person. And let me say this, this, this should really be clear. Physical sex doesn't necessarily always happen and you still can find yourself having immortality in a relationship based on the lies and the deceit of just having conversation, even though it didn't lead to a bedroom act, you still end up in situations that will have you emotionally strained. So please be careful to guard your heart, 
and in this time where everybody's kind of lawless, try to abstain. Try your best to make sure that you you go, you govern yourself according to the word. Maybe we can be free. song again bishop felix omar hill is uh in phoenix alabama and uh we were featuring music for him a while back on face to face and uh, hadn't been in touch with him and so i came across his song and decided to use his song not necessarily that this is his situation but use this song to introduce the bride war white and to talk about sexual sin and to talk about how, you know, we try to clean it up after we commit the sin. We, we want to keep the perspective of what marriage truly is, covenant, covenant. And for you all, I know you know this, but everyone you ever step out of line with and end up intimately sexually active with what did the bible say that sin is in you it it is the only sin that defiles the body it really does so please handle your sex life uh with one person that you have committed um uh, the covenant of marriage with and keep yourself pure until you are married because they're there's just, right now, it's just a, a time that we're expecting the Messiah to come back. And we want to hold on and we want to endure. We want to not sell ourselves short. Blessings to you. This is Pastor Ellison. Please stay tuned in. Like and subscribe to the channel. We planned on having different short sessions. This is one that went a little bit more than 30 minutes, but I appreciate you tuning in and share it with someone. You may be helping someone. The scriptures are always going to be what the Father wants us to talk about. Have a good evening.